So, a new patch, a new game mode, a new dark zone, a new incursion, and a new difficulty. But what gear set do you take? Well, I'm going to teach you the most versatile build to manage all of the above. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my most versatile gear set. Now this is a combination between high end and exotic. Now I've covered this previously with one of my previous videos, but obviously coming into 1.6 there's been some changes. So let's get things going. Let's start off obviously with the gear pieces and go through and why this is the most versatile set and why it's going to get through all of the tasks of 1.6 and it's going to be such a good build, so strong, definitely going to pick it up. So first thing. Gear pieces and survivability. Now I've actually chosen four items for this build which are going to give you survivability. It's going to be the refresh mask, the specialized bike pack, the nimble holster and the barrette's bulletproof vest. Now there's going to be a bit of controversy around the vest but I'll talk about that in more depth when we cover it. So the first one is the refresh mask. Now refresh talent is all healing is improved by 30% within the last health segment. This on its own is really really strong. Now if you combine this as well with prototype stamina, prototype performance mods, sorry, 6% first aid heal, you can actually equip four of these, one to your knee pads, one to your holster, and two to your backpack. This is going to give you a combination of 24%. Add this to the refresh, the 30% is 54% additional healing just from being down in your last health segment. So this on its own is a really, really strong talent. Definitely worth picking up. Now the next one is a specialized backpack. We're all familiar with specialized. It adds 200% of firearms and stamina to your skill power. So essentially it pulls from your firearms pool and your stamina pool, adds 200% and gives you a really nice buff to your skill power. This again is going to help with all your skills in terms of healing ability. So again, I definitely, definitely recommend picking this one up. Now the third one is going to be the nimble holster. Now the nimble talent, it heals 2% of max health for every one meter running cover to cover combat. This is super strong. I've actually used this where I've gone down and it instantly picks me back up because I've just made it in time to the next cover. It's really, really useful. And as well, even if you're going against NPCs in legendary mode, you can just dart back, go across the map, go cover to cover and get yourself regen. Really, really strong. Definitely worth picking up. Now, the fourth one, which a lot of people are going to argue with me and going to say, no, you should be going for a rapid chest piece or you should be going for a vigorous, is going to be the Brett's Bulletproof Vest. Now, a lot of people are going to argue with this choice because obviously the third unique talent that comes on this is an armor buff. And obviously armor has been changed around quite a lot in 1.6 and in particular for Last Stand where everything gets maxed out. But this build is versatility across all. So just ignore what people are going to say about this. This is going to help you out in all different scenarios if you're going into the dark zone, if you're doing legendary, etc, etc. So, the Barrett's Bulletproof Vest. I've covered this previously. A lot of people have spoke about this. Obviously, the talents which come with this, no skills on cooldown, increase your skill power by 10%. Again, this is going to help with the healing. The second one is one skill on cooldown increases your damage by 5%. That's nice. And then the two skills on cooldown increases your armor by 10%. Now, the armor mitigation at the moment, the cap is 35%. With this particular build, I'm actually getting 32%. And if you can get towards 35%, then you're going to be as max as you're going to get. So having that additional buff of 10% on the chest piece is obviously going to help out unless you are in last stand. And we all understand, yes, you get the cap automatically. But this is pretty much the survivability with this unique gear set. So it's these four items. Now I want to talk about the damage. So the first one I want to talk about is going to be the chest again, the Barrett's Bulletproof Vest. As I just said, there's one skill on cooldown increases your damage by 5%. This is just a nice little buff. It's just nice to have. You're always going to have one skill on cooldown because you're going to either use one of your skills in a scenario or you're going to be healing. So you're always going to have that nice damage buff, which is really, really nice. Second one, what I want to talk about, and this is what makes this gear set or this high-end build, exotic build, whatever you want to call it, so strong is going to be the gloves. Now, the Skulls MC gloves, these are super, super strong. This is like having Alpha Bridge in 1.5 with the amount of damage that it outputs. So the talent is Skulls MC gloves, damage is increased by 16% when no set bonuses are activated. Now, what it essentially means is because there's no gear set and no bonuses are actually activated, this becomes live as such. So you get an additional 16% buffer on top. That's huge. That's a huge, massive increase. The next one is the Shortbow Championship knee pads. Now, the Shortbow, everyone might be familiar with these. I've covered these before. The Shortbow Championship knee pads, the fuse on your grenades is reduced to 0.2 seconds. That's super quick. You throw a grenade, instantly pops, and then you can down your enemy. Um, so this, again, definitely worth picking up. 
Now, if you want to increase your damage even more, you can actually switch out for a Colonel Bliss Holster. And the Colonel Bliss Holster is hitting a target consecutively with a sidearm increases your damage with a weapon by 2% for 20 seconds. This effect stacks until 10 shots, after which it stacks is consumed and triggers an EMP. Now, the unique ability about the Colonel Bliss is its combination with the 93R pistol. Because the 93R bursts in a three shot, you can actually put three stacks and you can get an extra 18% damage. So this is a huge, huge amount of damage. Plus, if you do this in combination with the MC school gloves, you can just see, and the combination with the Barrett's bulletproof vest, you can just see all these different stacks of damage adding up just from having this piece on. Now, I actually do prefer the Nimble holster. Um, I have played in between the two. But I do prefer Nimble just because it gives you that extra heal ability. And you, if you're just stuck in a corner and you can just run cover to cover and get away. So that's what I've done for. Now let's just go back through the gear pieces and let's talk about the major attributes. So going on to my chest piece, this is going to be as per Marco Styles video, um, where he's actually broken down what's going to be your best in slot guide. And I've actually put a link down in the description if you want to have a look at this. But essentially, I'm following the similar sort of rule. There's not really much changes, um, but I definitely worth recommend going through this video and just seeing exactly what you should be rolling on your gear because this is going to he actually breaks down every value for you but anyway that aside major attributes so the ones i've gone for is going to be health on my chest piece and it's going to be exotic damage resilience now the reason i've gone for exotic damage resilience is because we've got this new meta well sort of meta where the tacticians is super super strong and they've actually got the seeker balls in particular the airburst ones and they're doing a hell of a lot of damage if you've just got 10 percent exhausted damage resilience this is enough just to keep them at bay and it will keep you alive and the ability to heal yourself so yeah definitely go for these two um, and this is going to help obviously mitigate some of these ridiculous builds that are coming out now the minor attribute i've gone for is the ammo capacity um, you could argue with this you could change this round i like to have the ammo capacity because i do um a lot of I go outside of last stand as well, people. <laughs> so I like to have the ammo reserve just in case. So that's why I've gone for the ammo. Now, the next piece I want to talk about is going to be the specialized. Now, the specialized I've gone for, the major attribute is the health. And then the minor attribute is the ammo. Again, health, this is going to follow Marco's guide. Health is essentially a replacement for armor. You're going to want to try and put as much health as you can wherever you can. So I've gone for health. And then the minor is the ammo capacity. Again, because I play outside of last stand um, and I need that ammo reserve because I do the legendary missions, I do other incursions, I do other pieces. This is going to give me a nice ammo buff. So yeah, I've gone for the ammo. Now going across to my mask, my major attribute is skill power. Now this is going to help obviously with the skill power buff. Um, and this is going to help out with the healing. Then a minor attribute is going to be the burn resistance. Now this is super critical. You want to try and get as much burn resistance as you can because instead of 1.5 where you had a chance, if you had 50% burn resistance, you had a 50% chance of not being burnt or being burnt. Now it's, it's applicative as per the percentage. So it reduces what burn you're going to get. So the more burn, if you've got 99% burn resistance, you're only going to get burnt for 1%. And it's so much better. It's going to help out a lot more instead of having that chance. So I've gone for the minor on the mask is the burn. Now the school MC gloves, um, these are pretty straightforward. It's going to be pretty much as uh, everyone was running Savage. So you've got major attribute, LMG damage. I've got critical chance and I've got crit hit damage. Now I've gone for the LMG damage because I'm using um, this particular weapon, but I'll get into that later anyway. Going across to my shortbow knee pads, um, the major attribute again is health because it's replacing the armor. And then the minor attributes is bleed resistant, burn resistance and disrupt resistance. These are the three best you can have. Again, with the burn resistance, this is going to be um, added on to my mask. You can see here I'm up to 34% burn resistance, which is really nice. And then finally, going on to the Colonel Bliss or if you're going on to the Nimble, for this example, I've just got health. So you can see both of these are actually rolled for health. Um, and that's pretty much straightforward. So that's essentially the gear pieces. Now let's talk about the next one, which is going to be the weapons. Now the weapons I've gone for is the Pecan and the LVOOC. Now the reason I've gone for these two weapons is they are actually the strongest in the game. Besides the Urban MDR, I am trying to farm an Urban MDR. But I've been uns unsuccessful at the moment. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend getting hold of these two weapons. And obviously, if you'd followed my previous advice prior to 1.6, you could have actually purchased this for normal credits instead of having to Phoenix having to use Phoenix credits to get yourself up a pecan. Um, but yeah, I've got to give a shout out here to Wobo. He's done some data mining. And he's actually extracted all the information in regards to the weapons and the damage, and he actually puts it into a formalized graph. I'll put a link to the video in the description. It shows you um, each weapon and what their ability is going to be in terms of people. PvE and PvP. These are the two best ones for PvP. They're also applicable in PvE. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend picking these two up. So the first one 
going to be if I can. Now, for me, I want to talk about the base damage. Now, I've got firearms of 7,000. You'll notice that on this build that I've actually heavily stacked into firearms and you'll notice my stamina is actually reduced quite a bit. Now, the reason um, I've gone for the real high stack of firearms is because the toughness and the stamina, you actually get a base health pool coming into 1.6. Um, so no longer do you need to go all out for toughness. You want to try and get your damage up. So you can see here the Bacan is 23.2, which is way in front of all the other LMGs. And it is so strong. And when you actually watch Warbo's video, you'll actually see how strong this is. Now, the RPM on this weapon is only 650, but obviously you can increase this, which I've done. Then you've got the unique talents which come on the weapon. So the Bacan, obviously being an exotic weapon, is going to have this unique talent. Now the talent is more aimed at PvE, um, but it does come applicable in PvP and it is sort of viable. So e the Pacan talent is each kill makes the next reload have 20% extra bullet compared to, the, to compared to its base. So what essentially it is, is when you start killing multiple enemies, um, you'll see that your ammo reserve will actually increase and your magazine size, you'll notice it goes up to 130, 140, um, then you just to keep laying down these rounds now the other two talents which i've gone for um is destructive so everyone's familiar with destructive armor destructive values increased by 15 percent when using this weapon so this is going to be applicable not so much in the dark zone unless somebody's got you know uh, min max 35 percent armor I would like to change this round, um, but unfortunately this was the pack end that was available to me at the time. And then the next talent I've gone for is the Unforgiving, which obviously the missing health segments increase the damage um, by 10% for one missing health segment, and then two, 25%. So it's really, really strong. And then uh, as well, on top of this, I've got the combination of my gloves, which are rolled towards the LMG. This is pairing up really nice for me. Now, the mods which I've actually applied to this weapon, I've gone for headshot damage. So on the top, I've got VX1 scope which has got 17% headshot damage, 4% crit hit damage, 3% crit hit chance. On the muzzle, again, headshot. So this is Amiga rifle suppressor. Amiga, sorry, rifle suppressor. This has got 18.5 headshot damage, 4% crit hit damage, 3% crit hit chance. And then going across, I've got the extended magazine, which has got 110 magazine size, 3% crit hit chance, and then 4.9 rate of fire. So that's pretty much it for the Bacan. Now onto the LVAOC. Now this is not much is going to change since 1.5. Again, um, you want to try and get as high base damage as you can. You can see here I've got 22.4, which is really strong. My RPM is 850. Obviously, you can increase this again. Um, so yeah, really strong weapon. And then when you see Warbo's video again, he actually talks about the LVAOC. It is very close um, in terms of damage for the Urban MDR, but the Urban MDR just, is just outperforming everything. And I haven't got one to show you, but they are super strong. They're just OP at the moment. Um, so the talents I've got on this is going to be Unforgiving. So again, missing health segments. Brutal. Now, Brutal is the headshot damage is increased by 12% when using this weapon. So that's a really nice buff. And then Responsive, so damage is increased by 10% when close than 10 meters. Now, you'll notice I'm not using a talent where I have to use um, a specific unique skill because what I wanted is flat damage straight off the weapon and then obviously trying to get as much damage on top of this um, through my mods. So let's talk about the mods that I've got on this. So up top, a VX1 scope again. This has got 17% headshot damage, 4% uh, crit hit damage and 3% crit hit chance. Another Amiga's rifle suppressor. This has got 17.5 headshot damage, 3% crit hit chance, 4% crit hit damage. Underneath, now I've actually gone for reload speed on this because I do use this as my secondary. You could roll this and have 20% um, crit hit damage, but I've gone for 27.5 reload speed, stability, and optimal range. And then extended magazine again of 110.5. Um, magazine size, which is going to be really nice for the ammo pool. Then I've got 3% crit hit chance and then 5.6 rate of fire, which is getting me up to like 900 RPM, which is really nice. Now, this reload speed, because I use this as my secondary weapon, generally I'll focus with my Pacan. And then obviously that's got 100 rounds. If I do deplete that 100 rounds, I just pull this out instantly and I'll use this because it just does a serious amount of burst damage. Um, and then I can just get a quick reload and, and burst them again really strong now as for my sidearm of choice which i've gone for is the 93r now the reason i go for the 93r is in case i do switch out from my colonel bliss holster as i was talking previously this is in burst fire so in burst fire is shooting out three bullets if you can stack all three shots that means you're essentially getting an extra buff of 18 percent damage Make it nothing unique here, it's just a 93R. The only thing that I'd recommend is obviously the talent harmful. So each hit has a 15% chance to bleed um, status effect. This still does nullify the target slightly, so you'll see them slow down. It's not as useful as it was in 1.5, but it's definitely really strong. The next thing I want to talk about is going to be my abilities. Now going across to my abilities tab and looking at my skill tree first, 
The first one I want to talk about is going to be your first aid heal. Now, the one that I've actually gone for in 1.6 is actually going to be overdose. Now, the reason I've gone for overdose and not booster shot like 1.5 is the heal ability and what it actually generates for you so first i'll talk about booster shot and why that's become irrelevant now so the booster shot come 1.6 the mitigation has been reduced to 35 percent previously in 1.5 everybody was aiming at stamina builds where you're trying to get as much armor as you could on your build as much health as you could on your build and build up as much resistance as you could having the booster shot gave you a huge increase in damage resistance come 1.6 now the mitigation has been reduced to 35 percent it's actually reduced the size of the resistance you're going to achieve from the booster shot so it's still applicable but it's nowhere near as strong on the flip side of this, the booster shot used to increase your damage. Now, come 1.6, you'll notice this build is aimed at firearms and as much damage as we can do. So having this increase in damage, which is going to be very minor compared to the overall build and how much damage you're trying to get on your build, again, is becoming irrelevant. So the booster shot has sort of been taken down quite a lot. And the third thing is the self-heal on a booster shot is 77,000 HP. You compare this to your overdose and your self-aid heal is 130,000 HP. Now, this is a huge increase in health, but this doesn't this doesn't speak for all of your health regeneration. As Pearl was talking about previously, with the Refresh Mask, which its unique talent gives you 30% additional healing in the last health segment, and the Prototype Mods, which are additional 6% times 4, which gives you 24% additional healing. If you combine the two again, which is 54% additional healing in the last health segment, and you take 54% of 130,000 HP, is essentially 65 thousand hp now if you combine the two that's 195,000 hp just from being back down in your last health segment now going back to my character sheet really quick you'll see here my toughness is 370 now if i go across to my survivability tab you'll actually see my max health is 250,000 that's at 370 toughness now this 250,000 hp if you was to break that down into thirds when I get down to my last health segment and I actually go into that last health segment, I'm always going to have 50,000, unless I'm going to die, I'm always going to have 50,000 HP. So when I use my overdose, with combination with the refreshed and the prototype mods, is 195,000 health, which is going to boost me instantly back to full health. So you can see where this now combination comes together. It gives my health uh, coming back up again, and then obviously I get back to my full health. And then the overdose will give you the ability, if you use it when you're not in your last health segment, if you say if you're in full health, it will give you an overheal as well, which again is really, really nice. So quickly, let's go back to the abilities tab. The second one that I've gone for is the immunizer. Now, you're probably thinking, why have you gone for your immunizer and you're not using other skills which could perform damage? The reason I've gone for the immunizer is going to be survivability again, because this is more of a versatile set, and it's going to be a combination of everywhere. And the immunizer actually gives you, um, obviously everyone's aware of the immunizer, that gives you the status effects gets removed as soon as you deploy this. So the immunizer here, oh, sorry, it keeps going back over. Let's just click on this side. So when you drop the recovery station, that removes any status effects. But the good thing about this as well is any of these, once you pop them at the end of their life or even in between, if you pop one, it actually gives you an increase of health. And you can see here, it'll give you 70,000 health. If you do this with the combination with refreshed again, obviously you're going to get an extra 50 and the prototype mods, a 54% increase. You're going to see yourself up around 100,000 health um, just from popping one of these. So again, it's like having a, a, a secondary heal method, which is really nice. Now, the third one is obviously going to be the recovery link. This one is obviously using with teammates. Um, I've not gone for attack link. I generally run with the recovery link just as a fail save. If I've used both my healing abilities and I can't use my nimble, I'll just hit the T ability and use the recovery link for myself. Yes, it's selfish, um, but it does save you sometimes. But obviously, I will use this if I see an if I see a friendly person go down. I'll use this and get them back up. So it's really nice. So let's go and have a look at the talents which I've got on this build. The first one, again, is going to be critical save. Not much has changed here. So using a med kit during low health increases the damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds. So that resistance, again, is nice. Just having going down to the last health segment. Um, now, this is only applicable to a med kit during low health to increase the damage resistance. So I've been testing this, and I don't know whether to stick with critical save or change this round. Um, so this might be the alteration to my build. And I might actually switch this out um, onto my strike back because I'm not re running with a rapid chest piece. If I'm using last stand, I'll switch out for a rapid chest piece, which is which rapid essentially gives you 15% um, additional healing speed. Um, obviously, with combine this with the strike back, and it's going to give you a lot quicker heals, and they're going to be more readily available. So yeah, the one that I'm running at the moment is the critical save um, on this particular build. 
Now I'm also using Tactical Advance. Now the reason I'm using Tactical Advance is because I use the Nimble. And uh, Tactical Advance, obviously this is a damage build. It's still applicable. It doesn't hold as, as much as it did in 1.4 where you had 10 seconds. Obviously now it's only 5 seconds. But it does work. I actually use Tactical Advance quite a lot. Um, and obviously once you've come straight off using the Nimble, you can spin around. You've got this additional buff and 2% per meter. If you get a decent sized Tactical Advance in, this is a huge amount of damage. Now in combination with this, I actually use Evasive Action. Now the reason I use evasive action is during the cover to cover move, in, 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 sorry, during the cover to cover move, incoming damage is reduced by 30%. That's massive. So if you're running from cover to cover and someone's trying to target you down, having an additional 30% resistance is obviously huge and that's going to help you out quite a lot. So that's why I run the evasive action. Now the fourth talent I use is precision. Now the reason I go for precision is because I'm not running any sort of pulse or any skills, um, all I need to do is headshot a hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds. So this is just going to be a base pulse, but it just gives you that extra flexibility to get some crit damage in there. Um, and I've actually got on both weapons about 15% crit hit chance. So this is just nice having this on the side as well. So that's pretty much it guys i hope you enjoyed this build guide video if you did like it then a like it would be super appreciated and obviously if i've missed anything leave a comment down below and i'll reply back as quick as i can now the other thing that i'd like to mention just before i do go is i'm going to be covering the traditional green gear sets um, in more depth the reason i've done this one first is this is the most versatile and i understand this is very hard to come by what with all the exotic items if you'd like me to do a video on the easiest way of farming these items just let me know down below in the comments and i can show you the quickest way and easiest way of farming these items and then obviously moving forward i'm going to be doing the traditional gear, gear sets and i'm actually going to be showing what's changed in 1.6 in particular the skill power now because it's scalability only diminishing returns come at 450 which is a huge change obviously since 1.5 and obviously the difference from stamina and firearms and why people are going more towards a glass cannon build in 1.6 and dropping the previous 1.5 stamina builds so yeah hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll catch you in the next one